Yes, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. The game has just finished. Tottenham Hotspur 2, Luton Town 1. We got it done in the end. It wasn't easy, as I suggested it wouldn't be. I'm going to say it from the get-go. I even had a bet that Luton would score first and would be leading at half-time and that Tottenham would turn it around in the second half. We have a propensity to do that. We're better in the second half. Generally, things change. We bring on strength in depth, the likes of Lo Celso, the likes of Brennan Johnson. The first half didn't really click. Terrible start from Tottenham. Broke on the break. A mistake from Kulisevsky gives the ball away. Unnecessarily bad pass. Sonny receives the ball, slips. I think he slipped. And then Luton broke in the second minute. And look, watching it back from what I've seen, it looks just like a disaster class of defending. I didn't feel like uh, Udogi got back. I didn't know really his positional sense wasn't there. Timo Werner looked like he just stood still and watched the break on him. Didn't get back in support like you would expect a winger two in that scenario. Van der Ven not being there meant that Radu Dragasin was pulled into a position and he looked a little bit out of sorts. It was just poor all round and a really good finish. Terrible start to the first half for Tottenham two minutes in. From then on, Luton sat back as they would, as you would expect them to, and frustrated the life out of the game. Wasted time at every opportunity, lying down, faking you know, nonsense. For me, I was sitting next to the guys in the stadium thinking there's at least seven, eight minutes of injury time at the end of the first half, but only three minutes were given. I think the referee today had a really bad game. He blew up for everything soft. Everything that was a free kick was really softly given, but wasn't calling out yellow cards where they should have been, at least in the first half. And it was a frustrating affair for the first 45 minutes. But chances for Tottenham. You had Sonny getting through, breaking brilliantly well. Lovely ball put through to him. I forget who it was from. It might have been Kudasevsi, but forgive, forgive me if I'm wrong about that. And he breaks past. He hits the first play. I think he has a shot. He hits one post. It's the second post. Bounces back out. You know, can't get much closer to scoring. You had Timo Werner in the first half as well. A really, really easy, or not, not going to say easy opportunity, but an opportunity that he should be doing better with. And he puts the ball wide. And it's one of those days. And if I'm entirely honest, in the first half, Kulosevsky frustrated the life out of me. Timo Werner frustrated the life out of me. Back to kind of sorts. You were hoping, from what you've seen of Timo Werner this season, you would have hoped... You know, getting the goals that he has done and putting the assists in that you'd hope that maybe that confidence trick, that confidence boost in the mental kind of aspect of the game would have been a game changer for him. But it hasn't been. It made a silly mistake, like a, a, an unforced, unnecessary miss against Fulham with the ball hit his shin. He should have put that away. And I think, I'm not sure if that got into his head, but he didn't have a good, day, a good game today, Timo Werner, in my opinion. Correct me if you think differently. I also thought Kulisevsky wasn't there when there was chances. At the, towards the end of the first half, we were putting balls towards the back post when we did get into good areas. A lot of balls whipped towards the back post on the right-hand side, but Kulisevsky wasn't there. It was very frustrating. Lots of huffs and puffs and tuts and groans and moans because Tottenham should be beating a team like Luton more convincingly than, than we do. Or at least that's the kind of... That's the approach that you hear from people. And I kind of knew it wasn't going to be that way. I, I kind of thought that, and I could say the bet was put in place in accordance to my fears about the game. But I always felt confident second half. You know what, the second half starts and it's all Tottenham. It was all Tottenham in terms of possession. It was all Tottenham in terms of territory, in terms of momentum. I'll put the, the, the stats up on the screen if I can today. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. But you'll see there, there was nothing in, in Luton apart from that kind of that quick goal that they got in the second minute. And after that, it was basically their, their chance to try and hang on for 88 minutes, which to me was a little bit silly of Luton to do it that way. They didn't need to sit so deep. They're a team that when they want to can break and play. Now, I know they didn't have a, a wonderfully full strength team to work with, but some of their players did really well. I thought Doty on the left hand side was, was brilliant, brilliant. I thought the left side centre back, was it Mendy? I forget his name, um, had a really good game, really, really good game. Carlton Morris at the top did everything he could to kind of uh, create some, some mischief and, and, and play, uh, play the devil's advocate, if you like, in a game that was, hi mate, in a game that was, that was, it was difficult for Luton to, to, to get into the game after that. It was all Tottenham with momentum and fluidity, but the frustration for me was how often Tottenham had the ball, and yet if it was Romero that had the ball, if it was Dragasin, if it was Basuma, there was so much stale 
stagnation. There was no, hello mate, you're right. There was so much uh, stagnation in the team. There was there was so little movement at times. It was incredibly frustrating in the first half. Second half, a little bit of it, less of it, but we got better and better. And it was only a matter of time until we got the job done. And look, the first goal, uh, an unfortunate own goal for the Luton player. I think the Luton right back, or the right side of the centre back. But once that, once it went to 1-1, from then on, it was a, ma a matter of time, really. I want to give some really some, some massive shouts out today to some specific players that I thought did really, really well. Giovanni Lo Celso today was absolutely sensational. He came on in the 68th minute, and his involvement alongside Benton Core was the difference. Now, I'm not going to call out uh, Pape Saar. He was one of the guys that departed the team. I thought Saar had a really good game. I thought his mobility was... He was one of the only players that was trying to move around, was trying to use those long legs of his to try and find space. It didn't work quite click for him, but I don't think he had a bad game. Madison, I don't think did. I think again, once again, Madison today, really not kind of doing what he was doing at the very start of the season. And again, we've spoken about this. Madison, Leicester fans that I know have said it to me all year. He's brilliant when he's not, when he hasn't got an injury at the start of the season. And once he picks up that injury, it takes time for him to get going again. Like a kind of an old car, a classic car in the winter it takes a bit of time to warm the engine up and and look he I didn't think he was brilliant again I, I, I thought he had a bad game if I'm honest again tell me if I'm wrong seeing it from you know the perspective I've got is different to watching it on TV if that's where you saw it but didn't think he was good but when Lo Celso came on I think he was I think he he has this ability to observe the game and see the ability to take advantage to fit to, to, to maneuver into the gaps into the spaces into half spaces and some of his work in that second half, in that last 25 minutes, was absolutely unbelievable. Not just on the ball, but off the ball. The press he was putting on to win the ball back, the, 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 kind of, um, the speedy charge downs to, to take the ball out of trouble in the last couple of minutes, got a rousing applause from the stadium here. And to me, I think there's a very big and strong conversation we have to have, a necessary conversation we have to have this week or over the next couple of weeks over what to do about Lo Celso. Because when he's fit and when he's happy and when he's in the mood, Lo Celso is a top class player. He's got one year left on his contract. And look, we haven't seen anything like the 50 million pound of value that we paid for him. But if he's happy, I think he's someone that Tottenham should think very carefully about whether to liquidate that asset for 10, 12 million quid, which is all you're going to get for him in the summer. But then, of course, Daniel Levy's going to sit there and say, well, he's only got one year left. If you let him go, you're going to let him go for free next year, potentially, and that's not necessarily something that he'll be in interested in doing. But for me, it's just a, it's a very careful consideration about how fit he is, how available he is, because this season he's been out three separate times, and in the, in the periods between those injuries, he's obviously trying to regain his fitness and stuff. But when he's fit and when he's on it, Lo Celso is one of the better players in our squad and is a brilliant option off the bench. And I thought he was spectacular today. So shout out to him. I thought a shout out to Benson Core as well was necessary uh, when he came on alongside Lo Celso. At that point in the game, Luton were holding on, but Benson Core and Lo Celso worked brilliant. Little triangles in the middle of the park, not something we often see. Most of the time, the triangles that we see on the pitch are down the right-hand side. Poro and Kulosevsky with Saar, for example, are known for their triangles. Or down the left-hand side, Udogi, and whether it's Johnson or Timo Werner, alongside you know, whoever else in that midfield doing the triangles. But today, I thought Benson Core and Lo Celso were doing it, and they were bringing both players around them into play. Brilliant, brilliant cameos from them, and they were absolutely pivotal. Sonny, not sure how to think about Sonny today. I thought, first, first half, I thought he was... He was trying his best, but you know what, Richarlison, Richarlison's strength and ability to, to kind of handle the, the physicality of Luton's backline might have been a better option had it not been for the circumstances in which Richarlison found himself today. Obviously, he's coming back from an injury, he's coming back from the, the video. Maybe it wasn't, I've said this before, it's not a good thing to put him into the goldfish bowl immediately. But when he came on, he was great. Look, at the end of the day, guys, 2-1, we got the job done. I thought it would be tough. I thought it would be tougher than most people had thought it would be. And Tottenham Hotspur right now are at the t a team that isn't capable of, of just putting a team to the sword. It isn't capable of putting four past the team and allowing the fans in the stadium an easy day at the office. It's not how it works. It's a frustrating first half performance. The second half FC motif that existed under the Conte system, it still exists now. 
I hope that at some point next season, that once the everything the gel is is set and the 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 tactics are completely embedded, then we shouldn't have to continually think about this and expect a frustrating first 45, a an eventually successful second 45, where you get 80% of them of the possession, but you know that you're going to go down at some point in the game. It doesn't have to be that way. I'm tolerant. I'll, I'll be tolerant of it for this season. I hope that it will be changed next season. But overall, look. Once again, you know, like I say, I'm not that frustrated today. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with what happened because I was expecting it. I, so I kind of set myself up for the, the energy that we were going through uh, for today's purposes. Needed the three points. It was so important. We need 17 points to get to 70 for the season. We've got three today. West Ham on Tuesday. We didn't need to see Mickey van der Ven. He's fresh. When Mickey van der Ven is in the team, 2.2 points on average when he's not 1.1 points. Today we've got the three points without him for the most part. And, you know, it's one of those games, one of those days, like I say, you know, wasn't brilliant, wasn't perfect, wasn't pretty. Lots of possession, loads of momentum, lacking the clinical effort at times, but um, in the end we deserved it 100%. As I say, we, Sonny couldn't have got closer to the goal in the first half. In the second half, I think there was we were an inch away from having the goal that rolled across the goal line. It wasn't given. Wasn't that impressed with the referee, but I'm impressed with the, the kind of tenacity and the, the, the eventual workload from, from the guys. Three points well deserved. I know we all want to see Tottenham take a team to the sword, and if we can't do it against Luton, then who can we do it against? But you know what? There is no such thing as an easy game in the Premier League this season. There never will be. The margins for... The difference between success or failure are incredibly thin. Today, I'll take it, take it on the chin. We did it. I'm going down the pub. We got 150 quid from one bet. I'm not even going to tell you about a second bet because that's a little bit dis disgraceful odds. But listen, we got it done. Like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know your thoughts on the performance. I'll see you on the fan show tomorrow. Like, subscribe, and comment, guys. And as always, come on, you Spurs.